I have athletes using sauna for another purpose. So after their gym session, they're going straight to the sauna and hopping in it to increase their EPO. So instead of doing altitude training, they hop in the sauna to get the same benefit. Yeah, so there are three really fantastic researchers to follow who are looking at the crossover between altitude and heat. We have Jim Cotter's lab at, at, at Otago University, you have Stephen Chung, um, who is over in Canada, and Christopher Minson, who's at Oregon. Mm -hmm. And the idea behind getting into the sauna post-exercise is you're going in slightly dehydrated. So if you're dehydrated, that means you don't have enough water or plasma to circulate the blood enough. So yeah. then, yeah, you're getting more of it coming to the periphery which means that there is a greater decrease in blood flow to our central organs, one of them being the kidney. Mm. So the kidney is being starved of oxygen. And what that does, by decreasing the partial pressure of oxygen, it's stimulating the kidney to say, hey, we need more oxygen carrying capacity, yeah. so let's produce more red or EPO, which will produce red cells. So there is a protocol for that to really moderate the dehydration as a stress response and how long you stay in the sauna, and how you rehydrate post of saunaing, so that you don't kill that response. Mm. So that when you are adapting to the heat, you can go to altitude and perform well. And because we know that there are a lot of people who are over responders or non responders to altitudes, that means they go up, they get sick, and they can't stay up there, or they go up and there's no, they don't get anything. But with heat, everybody responds. Ooh. And we do see there's a sex difference in the ad adaptive changes and how long you need that sauna exposure. But both men and women will get a better cardiovascular, meaning they get more blood volume, red cells, plasma, to help them when they're at altitude and in the heat. What's like the half-life or detraining time? Like how long does the training last for after you've done a protocol? Um, so this is one of the studies that um, Jim's lab did looking at the decay yeah. of it. And they found that after you fully acclimatize, you can go two weeks and then have a top up and it'll hold it. Oh, cool. So you do your full protocol and two weeks, no heat exposure, have one top up, and then that will hold you for another two weeks. So wow. you can reduce the decay rate by having a top up of the sauna as a reminder to your body what it's supposed to be doing. Our bodies are very smart. They are. Mm.